Yeah, there, something like there. that. Hey, yeah. we are live. Cut, <laughs> caught you guys off guard this time. You were talking, and I just brought us live. Isn't that fun? Cool. Hey, well, guys, welcome to X Garage. My name is Jake the Snake, and I got a wonderful cup of coffee this morning. Hold one second. <sighs> Whoa, Thank you so much me. for yeah. <laughs> yeah. What What was that? Yeah, we could hear that. Sounded like a a nice cup of coffee there. Oh yeah, I made it myself. Ooh, what kind of beans? What what uh, what what's your choice of oh, bean there? I'm a sellout. I did just a Pike Place from Starbucks because I can get them th from the drive through. Yeah, I, I I I like to go local as well. I went Starbucks today yep. uh, because we're, the we're Washingtonians. We can say that. <laughs> uh, the local stands are still. You can't go and sit in them, uh, and that's really. I wanted to go down to uh, Vessel, and uh, I can't sit there. So yeah. Hey, we got a few viewers on. How's it going, everybody? Feel free to leave a comment and say hi. Uh, and also share this uh, across the internets and all that. Uh, we are talking a little bit about controversial stuff today. Uh, I did want to start off and show uh, a video of a guy named Jake Eakin uh, walking through the autonomous zone in Seattle. Uh, it is fairly vulgar, so uh, do prepare your ears if there are kids around, if you'd like to hide them or uh, pause the video or whatever you feel necessary to do. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and share... It's on Twitter. I'm never on Twitter. Let's see. I think only like 10% of America is on Twitter. So it's not what, very much. What is Twitter even? Isn't it? Isn't it? It's a little bird. <laughs> <laughs> All right. I'm taking my headphones off and I'm going to test. Here we go. We got to figure out a better way to do this at some point. Yeah. I think there's a way of channeling the audio, but we'll, yeah, we'll have to figure that out. We'll figure that out. Anyway. Can you hear that? Yeah, yes. I can hear it. Cool. I'm going to turn up just a little bit. All right. Who don't matter? This motherfucker. 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 They mind violence, bitch. I'm not. Most people have been following my stream. You don't want me? You want me to pull your panties down? I'll pull your fucking panties down. You said all lives matter, but you can't even Bitch, don't come back. Don't go away, man. Bitch, just go away. Who don't matter? This bitch don't matter. Who don't matter? This bitch don't matter. Punk ass out of here. I don't know why you're talking to that motherfucker. The one about a lot of that footage that went around the world, like the umbrella and all that, a lot of the front line. So, so we get a sense for <laughs> for that a little bit. So a, a little intense. I, I'm shocked that that's happening in our great state of Washington. Um, honest, honestly, the pictures I've seen of it make, make me think that we're we're entering into a third world country or a terrorist zone or something like that. Isn't it like the the country of Chaz? I think that's what they're calling it now. It's literally they, they're calling... yeah, they're completely walled off an area downtown. I, I've downtown heard that Seattle. they have signs saying you're now leaving the United States of America. Yeah. Yep. Interesting. Like, uh, and they're totally allowing it. The yeah, I I, have, I, I, have... I heard. Uh, I think it was Governor Inslee was saying he he finds it to be a a a positive uh, for the city of Seattle. Yeah, I, I saw an article today. Um, it just Although the, up. I, I, I want to make a note on that, and I believe it was the some of the, the police, um, um, whoever's involved in the in the uh, spokes uh, speak spokesman spokesman uh, was mentioning that um, the the police were not finding that a positive because it pushed them out from that area uh, to where their calls were like 18 to 20 minutes out from when it was about five for that zone. Yep. Um, so yeah, there's, it has implications. And, and, and uh, anyway, 
Yeah, so on, on Yahoo News, it says that Seattle police chief were not able to get 911 calls for rape, robbery in the autonomous zone. Yeah. So, I mean, they're they're doing a great job policing themselves, I'm sure. Um, but anyhow, <laughs> um, so all that aside, I mean, there's obviously been a lot that's happened in our country, than we're, and it kind of goes beyond our expertise uh, in many areas. But I think the thing that we all wanted to talk about is um, all these people, whether we're talking about those in the autonomous zone um, or the people that they are harming, um, George Floyd, the police, were all made in the image of God. Mm -hmm. uh, and when you remove that, when you take out the image of God, and if you don't have uh, that kind of vision of society, if, if people do not see each other that way, who's to say that what they're doing is wrong? Who's to say that the backlash against the police, um, what the police uh, did against George Floyd and, and when police brutality genuinely happens who's to say that's actually wrong if we are not created in the image of god right and you can't say right you can't say that that pitting one person like that even in that video where he flips he, he says this life don't matter yeah. um that is the natural philosophical consistency from a worldview that is not grounded in the objective truths uh that god's revealed to us yep. through scripture like if, if we're creating the image of god we have a basis to love all people equally um and that was really the basis coming out of the enlightenment and writing of our constitution and um and, and that these these deist thinkers were not thinking merely from subjectivity but they had some some truths rooted on the objective level from christian theism and I think what we find in our generation today is that there's been a loosening from those values. Mm -hmm. and, right. and, and sorry, I'll stop there. I, I do have a lot more to say on that. And, yeah. You can keep yeah, going, man. I, I'm, I'm enjoying. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I, I think the, the big thing is, is hearing what he's, what he, what he was saying to the guy walking through there, the guy's walking through doing his own type of uh, protest, if you will, or he's saying something about his views. But he's not sitting there um, calling, saying that these, you know, so one guy's protesting, all the others are doing their protest, yet those that, that larger group has this individual with others chanting behind him being divisive. And yet the, the whole right. thing and premise of their, their so-called agenda is to bring people together. Yep. Um, if this, I, I, think, yeah. I think they found out that he was pro-life, uh, and so they, they ushered him out. Which goes to show you that Black Lives Matter uh, and Antifa, they're, they're not apolitical groups. They're not, it's not just uh, a march for equality, but they, they have their own views on anthropology, um, their own views on religion. It, it kind of functions as a, a worldview starting point. Black Lives Matter isn't just a hashtag that people use. It's a it's a group that has their own social agenda. Um, so if you don't fit into the narrative like this gentleman didn't, um, then it's easy enough just to usher you well, out. And, and that's the issue because there's not a richer and deeper foundation that says, hey, you know what? You disagree with our values, but ultimately you're created in the image of God. And mm -hmm. we're created to think. We're created to reason. We're created after a creator who is the... Um, supreme other rational mind, if you will. Um, and we are created to express that, that, that in our lives by thinking well, by, by um, uh, having this unity and diversity in thought and in life. Yet they don't have that as a backdrop to, like you're saying, to their philosophy. Their backdrop is um, this is the right way of thinking. If you disagree, you need to be casted out. Which yep. again is the very thing that there's that a so-called this movement should be. Uh, it's it's so radically, I'd say, to use Kant, it's 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 uh, 
it's, it's not, it's uh, what's the word? Um, unintelligent. It's, it's literally not being human at the point of which <laughs> we are being irrational with our own beliefs. We, we aren't even consistent with them. I don't know if that makes sense. On one hand, you're saying um, we're about black lives matter because all lives matter. That's the assumption there is that we want to, mm -hmm. we want to lift up a people group that has been pushed down. So all of us are evil. And then yet at the same time, they're pushing down other people because of their beliefs. Right. It was, what's the great irony of movements like black lives matter while they're trying to get rid of racism because of their methodology. And I think ultimately because they don't see people, how they are made in the image of God, they're adding fuel to the fire of racism. They're, they are increasing the kind of racism we're seeing in this day. People feel justified in, in the way that they act against uh, other minority groups, um, and they're they're feeling more indignant about it because they are feeling in a, in a way reverse oppressed by the kind of Black Lives Matter. I mean, to give a, a kind of example, um, you're seeing more marches for men, you know, uh, just being proud of being a man, pride of, of being a man because of uh, groups that are, are trying to elevate women. So men are starting to feel oppressed because of the, <laughs> the, the, the kind of elevation that we're seeing of, of women in the workplace or in society and whatever. But the, the means by which you elevate someone, are the, you're, you're basically winning the opposite side to the same kind of methodology. There, there's always going to be people that want to tag on to what you're doing. Um, and if it's not ultimately rooted in the Bible and how, how we are created, because if we are created in the image of God, we are created to a certain function. We are created to a certain kind of life. If we jump outside of that, we're obviously going to see some kind of uh, perversion from that. And I, I don't, I kind of want to jump in here. Um, I, I don't want to stick a, a stick in your spokes, but no, go ahead. Um, um, but in the framework of total depravity, I think uh, it's very consistent. Their thinking, like mm -hmm. the the problem is, is is sin ultimately. Yep. And the problem is is that these idea ideologies continually contribute themselves and uh, to to our sinful nature, and it enhances our sinful nature as humans. And we're just increasing sin. Um, with the, the invention of new ideologies. Um, uh, it, some of them might just be old ideologies. But uh, the thing is, is they are, they are acting consistent with total depravity. Is yep. they, they continue to um, not respond to evil with good, but they're trying to solve evil with evil. And... Yep. Unfortunately, that just creates more and more and more evil, and I think I think at, at the base that would probably be the problem. Um, and, and yeah, <laughs> if you guys are following, yeah, yeah, absolutely. Sorry. So yeah. Galatians three. So there is neither Jew nor Greek. There is neither slave nor free man. There is neither male or female. <laughs> For you are one in, G in Christ Jesus, and if you belong to Christ, then you are Abraham's descendant, heirs according to the promise. Yeah, this this doesn't eradicate the kind of distinctions that we see in Scripture. He's not saying that you're all of a sudden not a man, you're not a woman, but we are all equal when we come to the, the mm. come to Christ. Because yeah. as, as a, sorry, go ahead. Eve. Yeah, yeah. What's interesting is the whole biblical narrative, true narrative of, of concerning reality. Uh, starts with Adam, you know, Adam, humanity, one. Um, and we see that division takes place in the fall. Um, mm -hmm. Fear, um, loneliness, hurt, all these things. And I think from these, this, this, like Ethan mentioned, the deprived, de de depravity, our fallenness, that we're really just wandering the earth, trying to make sense of it on our own, autonomy, autonomy away from God, uh, press, suppressing his word and trying to make sense of life. And then that's what ends up even all the more in these, these various worldviews and various streams of thought that can't quite 
in their in the attempts to make sense of the world. I think they're honest attempts, but the problem is is detached from from submitting ourselves to God and His Word, and so it always ends up in some um, some like you're, you're talking about lifting up one people group or or one tradition over another or one culture. Or one, it's there's always something, um, whether economic status, um, and then you see like you just quoted in salvation just like we're created in in by nature as one in the image of god we see that in salvation the one god over history is redeeming all in the one man jesus christ mm -hmm. and so it is really this is uh, i mean an encouragement i guess not even just encouragement this is a profound and life transforming tr truth that uh, it is in the gospel that god is making us one any attempt of man, of humanity, apart from God to be one, will ultimately end up in some uh, sort of oppression and ultimately uh, a divisiveness between us and God. Uh, you know, I, I was thinking about how how simple of a virtue it seems to, to think about for, forgiveness, right? Um, when I am speaking to a brother uh, that I may have wronged or may have wronged me, my my duty is to forgive and i should expect to be forgiven in in christ because if we're all if we're all made in uh if we're all being reconciled in christ then our, our call is to forgive each other if we're being repentant um so there's this kind of cultural um expectation that there should be um uh, kind of a, a kind of perverted penance uh, for white people at large or um, swaths of people that haven't been a part of the injustices. <clears throat> uh, I'm not saying there, there isn't some kind of action reconciliation that we can take part of. Um, but if, if, you, if you're not approaching it with the, the kind of Christian mentality that I, I am to forgive relentlessly, um, and that I should expect to be forgiven. Again, that, that takes context with inside the church. But there, there's a reason that God, you know, calls us as brothers and sisters to operate that way because it works. Yeah, and that goes, again, to that, that's just the, I mean, I don't have the words for the importance of the gospel, you know. Yeah. Uh, but but until we've been forgiven, we can't genuinely at the core of our being forgive others. It's going to perpetuate. That's why that the, this is all the more reason for Christians to just live out the gospel well in their in their immediate communities to offer show people that forgiveness that we've received. And it, and um, uh, and, and that that he, that washing of another's feet as mm -hmm. our Messiah, our God, has come down and washed our feet. Um the only faith that consistently, and it's not even the, the only, yeah, the only faith that is, is, is corresponds to the way life really is, is, is this, is a Christian worldview that can bring about the transformation of our hearts that does desire to see all people truly blessed, truly forgiven. Mm -hmm. And, and, and like Ethan, you said before we started, when you go into other paradigms, the, the paradigms of which we were raised in, in the, in the public schools, which is this uh, naturalistic, Darwin evolutionistic worldview that ultimately is 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 this upward climb of this genetic of our of our being the speciation you mentioned as we're growing into transforming into a whole new creature those who are at the top are the ones that are more virtuous and more valuable and so cut off those below who's to say who's at the top and who's below um, and and in this case in these events we find that those who are at the top are apparently um, those who have this philosophical idea that is a part of this group's agenda in that video. Um, and that's totally arbitrary, of course. That's, that's, not, a, a tr that's not true by, by any means that um, we are on this upward climb. But Ethan, you want to share a little bit about that? You kind of had some thoughts on that. Yeah. So talking about um, Darwinian thought, uh, you, you see this shift into... <laughs> um idea it, it starts it starts with finches <laughs> I, like and that's where darwinian thought started and it's this idea that um a species is developing into um a new species but all you're seeing is one species just change how it looks and 
we have a finch with a big beak and a finch with a skinny beak. And if, if we start applying that mentality to our society, then all of a sudden we start categorizing humans into um, different groups and start placing value on those different groups according to their looks. And this is dangerous. This is, this is what caused the Holocaust. This is what caused, uh, this is what caused a, a lot of communistic ideas that it causes abortion. It causes, it causes a lot of different things. And this is very dangerous thought. And you could, you could say, well, this is, this thought is emerging out of a post-Christian um, thought, but no, this is pre-Christian thought too. This, oh. this sort of thing has been with us forever because it's sin. It's inherent to our sinful nature to try to go in there and try to make ourselves look better than someone else. And uh, the Bible is completely contrary to that. Um, read the story of the Good Samaritan. Read the story of the woman at the well. These are the, this is Jesus addressing uh, almost racism at his time between the Samaritans and the Jewish people. And he literally sees no difference between them. He sees them as lost people in need of Christ. And uh, this is the way the Christian should approach this, this topic is that these are sin issues. It's something that's probably not going to, it is not going to go away until, until Christ return and we are fully restored and nature is fully restored. As it says in Romans eight, it, it longs for nature longs for um, this restoration. Um, yeah. Uh, all nature groans and mm -hmm. and this is where we're at and nature is groaning but the thing is is that if it doesn't turn to christ there is no solution yeah and i think that's that's definitely where we uh, need to head ra racism is a vile evil mm -hmm. it is it'll it'll, it'll persist outside of christ yeah like you say Mar margaret sanger uh the founder of planned parenthood was a vile racist mm. um explicitly hated the the black community um mm -hmm. and she would be very proud of their work today hmm. mm -hmm. yeah <laughs> you know um i don't think we could we could um speak too much upon the effects that this um philosophical treatment of science has done to our current generation i don't mm -hmm. i don't even think when I say Darwinian evolution, as it's been taught throughout the public school systems and into the universities, as if it were, uh, although the textbooks will use words like uh, appears and apparently and the theory, and at, at the real practical level, it's treated as a fact. And so a lot of a lot of uh, individuals are so so um, uh, uh, you know behind this idea that, that it's really at the core of a lot of people uh, of of. Of people's uh, understanding of human nature, and thus it, it plays out in their practices. It plays mm -hmm. out in the way we handle ourselves and comport ourselves in this world, mm -hmm. and we see it. Like it's it, there's no way around it. Our basic fundamental beliefs impact the way we live, and if we believe that we were not created ultimately in the image of God, or or even if we take a a um, a, a uh, theistic evolutionary view, even if you take mm -hmm. that we're still on this climb to something. Um, mm -hmm. we're, the image of God is this kind of this progress movement through history and eventually we'll come to this culminating image, uh, kind of taking Hegelian views of, of knowledge. And it just, we come to this end goal. And so along the way, you know, leave that, leave those, those others behind that are just behind the times philosophically, behind the times politically. Um, they're not moving with this oversoul spirit of Emerson. Uh, it's the same mm -hmm. stuff. It's, yeah. it's, just, I, it's, it's just, and it, it, you cannot have an equality of humanity on these, mm -hmm. on these other bases. And so, it's so, no. and that's why it's so strange for me as a Christian. I remember when I first came to Christ and this is nothing about me um, in terms of my holiness or anything like that. I'm, I am a wrecked person. People who know me, mm -hmm. my family, people who know me, know me best, know that I am in need of grace every day. But I will say this. When I met the Lord personally at a, at a young, probably 18 years old, at, on a personal rich level, that Christ died and atoned for my sin, um, it crushed me. And one of the very first things that crushed me was, it, out of that crushing, 
of my, my, my seeing my sin was this realization, a profound realization that, that I'm no better than anyone. And no matter the race, no matter the, the culture, the, the, how much someone makes or doesn't make, I, it really brought a profound sense of God loves everyone. Mm -hmm. If he can mm -hmm. love me, he can love everyone. And he does. So, and, and so I, I just want to encourage our viewers, uh, the gospel, even though we, we may not be able to live it out perfectly, it is the very gospel that changes our hearts to see everyone as mm -hmm. God has created them. Yeah. yeah. Me and my wife have been watching uh, MASH, the old television show. Um, that's 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 our, our binge of choice through the uh, quarantine. <laughs> and uh, I don't know how familiar you guys with the show, but there's this episode in which um, we're in, in the last season right now. So Charles M Emerson the the third, I believe, is his, his name. Um, wait, he's he's got a different last name. Hold on. Anyway, he's he's kind of this snob from Boston with a British accent. Um, and he walks up to the priest. He, everyone in the camp is telling him that he snores. This is, you know, classic slapstick kind of mm -hmm. 1970s, 1980s humor. And he's like, "Father, I, I have this this problem that I, I, I it's, it's it's really big. I, Winchester, that's his last name. Um, I I everyone in camp is telling me that I snore, and I uh, Winchesters don't snore. And if if I if I found out that I snore, well." I wouldn't be worthy of my name, and I, I just couldn't accept that I'm not better than everyone else. <laughs> and it, it, it's kind of it's, it was yeah. And the, the priest, the priest turns around. He's like, "Well, begging your pardon, but I happen to snore." <laughs> and I, it, it's a caricature, but I think it, it it's a caricature of of many pockets of our society. Yeah. Mm -hmm. We have tendencies to in in ways that are are much more um, devious mm -hmm. and uh, undetectable. Um, I, I think Black Lives Matter operates in such a way, uh, and many and I again I don't mean to get too political, but I, I do think in a lot of the ways that people grab onto these ideas of of racism, um, a lot of white people will, will harbor them, and and by by them shaming themselves and kind of lowering their head they're gaining kind of societal points like you know they're they're mm. creating this way that they feel better than everyone else by their um by yeah. applying that kind of shame that's a great point and that's something i haven't been able to articulate really well today but one thing that's been heavy on my heart is this is really an identity thing as well that people mm. are finding something to identify with uh, whether it be this cause or that cause. And, and I find that a lot of what I'm seeing the people who are supporting is they don't really have an identity themselves. And so anytime something comes up where they can feel this pride in something um, or be a part of something, um, they cling to it. And, and over the years, you'll find that they often will cling to things that are contradictory. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you know, at one point I'm, I'm clinging to this cause and then this cause and, and, uh, but those things all wash away. Um, mm -hmm. And and um, ultimately, our identity cannot be uh, cannot be satisfied with anything other than the person of Christ. Yep. Yeah. Our, our redeemer. Go ahead. Yeah. Because everything else is depraved, and it ultimately breaks down. Because yeah, we're following we, other people at that point. You know. Yeah. And other people fail us. And, yeah. And that's the problem: is if people have the faith in in the police, and the, the police are going to ultimately fail you. They they are sinners. Just like um, people in other other communities, um, and we we need to be careful that we don't place our identity in any particular community, um, but we place our identity in Christ. Because ultimately, in Christ, um, like Jake was reading, like, there is no slave, there is no Gentile, there is no Greek, you know, there is no Jew. Like it, we've, uh, there's female or male. It, it, we've we've transcended that. I mean, and it, yeah. It's, yeah, yeah. It's, it's a messy business placing our identity. Beauty. Oh, oh man, that's the yeah. beauty of that passage, right? Gen mm. Galatians, yeah. um, is that it, in our diversity as mm -hmm. male and female, our full humanity as yeah. slave at that time, whether you're slave or free, mm -hmm. uh, whatever class you are in, whatever in this mm -hmm. diversity and in in the structures of this world, and some of them are, are, are fallen structures that have been created by fallen man mm -hmm. trying to make sense of the world. Uh, but even in that, Christ has made us one 
to where none of this, none of these distinctions, these are just distinctions that, mm-hmm. um, that we could, uh, in the, in the, in our context today, I want to give an example is like, um, you know, we have differences of race, we have differences of occupation, we have differences of c- countries, the country, mm. the way we live our lives in our cultures. And yeah. in this, in Christ, we are still one. Mm-hmm. And I, I think this is the beauty. This, yeah, I believe this is one of the beautiful things of the gospel is that we can preserve that diversity, the difference. We can actually celebrate the difference of male and female mm-hmm. and, yeah. and uplift the 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 uh, womanhood and uplift manhood. Mm-hmm. We can uplift what it means to be an elderly person in society where they don't contribute, so-called contribute anymore. Yeah. But they do contribute. But yeah, you know, they do. Obviously, we do know uh, profoundly so. Uh, and then with the children, whatever. There's uh, we can celebrate all the diversity in life because we are made in the image of God. We have this un- unity am- amid our diversity, mm-hmm. amid the diversity of music of interest, et cetera. And I, I, I find that what is really, I, I, I think would bring a lot of help into the current movements is understanding there is beauty in diversity. There's beauty in difference and we should celebrate that. And, and that's one thing I think about why the, our, uh, the, the basis of our country with the, the freedom of religion, the freedom of speech, mm-hmm. uh, these are things that help preserve whether we have all these differences, I, I think these are fundamental principles that are helpful for fallen the fallen world, because it helps us. Uh, like you said, everything because of our sin problem, we're always going to be broken. But when we have certain principles like this, in our brokenness, there's still this common grace where we can show charity to each other in our differences. Mm-hmm. Uh, yeah. Um, yeah. Yep. Yeah. 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 I was going on too long, but no, um, no, great. big thing uh, is, I is the like ability it, to hold that diversity. Um, even yep. some of the diversity, which is is wrong, we mm-hmm. a lot of us have wrong beliefs um, at, at different or t- some maybe some quality in which we believe something's mm-hmm. a little bit off. But at, at the same time, we don't have to oppress that person. Um, yeah, we can just say, you know, that's 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 we can pray for them or uh, let's help them work through it, whatever. But we're not gonna we're not gonna maul you to the ground and cast you out. Yeah, yep. I think there's this tendency. Uh, uh, directly from the fall to to abandon our post. Hmm. Um, we have duties that we're we're given by virtue of uh, our our assignment to either being male or female, mm-hmm. uh, and those are are God given. But even in in the where you're born, hmm. who your family is, uh, are you rich or poor? How do you honor God with the things that you've been given? Mm-hmm. Um, and men hate the post that they've been given most often. Um, or they they abuse it to such an extent that they they harm others. Mm. Um, and I think that's, that's what we're seeing um, in the autonomous zone is um, people dishonoring the deacon, the government that God has implemented. And there, there are good ways to oppose... Uh, unjust rulings and un- unjust um, things that they do, um, but this the way that they are acting is is harmful to people, mm. and it just seems childish to me. Yeah, yeah, and and I think once again that's just operating out of their their total depravity, and I, I think the real question we should be asking uh, as the church is how do we as the church um, root out the sin of racism and um, nationalism and all those those different things, which uh, set people in different categories, and so that we can set them up as higher or better or less than other people. And I, I think the best one of the best ways of doing this is visit visit other countries, visit churches in other countries. Um, meet with with diverse believers um, and try to under like and talk to them and understand that they are in Christ the same as you are in Christ. Mm-hmm. And uh, I, I know that Paul Paul talks about this. I, I have to look up the passage, but um, with people being discriminatory against uh, poor people coming into um, the church and um, giving the rich people the, the best seat and the poor people the seat in the back and 
we need to once again address that as yeah. everybody is equal in, in Christ. Once you once you've come into the church, we we are all the same in the sight of, of God. Yeah, and all all forms of it are are vile. So whether it's the um, mm. the direct uh, looking down on a, a people and treating them poorly, mm -hmm. um, like black people have experienced in the United States, yeah. or even the reverse of that, uplifting mm -hmm. them so much in, in such a way, like I, I heard somebody say, um, I think it was in Spokane, encouraging people to go to black businesses to support them. Mm -hmm. like, on the surface, that sounds great. And like, I, I want to support local businesses. And I think it's yeah. great. But isn't it great that anybody owns a business? Yeah. Like I, I want to go. I want to go to business. I want to patron them because of their good work, and I, I think that that should be the goal for for anybody yeah. doing business, not just because they're they're black or they're white or they're Asian, whoever. Yeah. Right. Racism both ways is bad. Mm -hmm. right. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, and, and that comes down to uh, on this going to this current issue, and again, like. Uh, Jake had said at the beginning, we're not really informed in areas of politics and things like that. It's not our area yeah. of study. Yeah. But so with that caveat, um, it comes down to this. What I'm seeing is uh, some see this movement uh, as, as a response to a s systemic issue. And but mm -hmm. I don't know if many people are using that term rightly as it really re revolves around systems. Mm. Um, and I would, I would argue, for, and again, off what data I've studied and looked at, and even in, in myself living in a part of the United States that's historically known for racism, white supremacy, um, near North Idaho, um, I, I don't, I haven't been able to personally um, buy into the idea that there's a, there's a system issue, that we have a, a real, still like taking us back to the, to the days where we had laws that were built around segregation um which you guys may know more about those those laws than i i'm not a big historian on american history but um and that's not to say i, I, sh I probably should be but uh with that said i'm not buying it i think what we see like you guys are mentioning is pockets of still this human heart condition where whether you're in a police force where you work at a copy stand or you work at the mall or wherever you're at the heart of individuals some of them have uh and we're talking about again with education of Darwinian evolution that we're the, we're better. Mm. Um, this type of stuff is what's breeding what we're seeing in the systems. Mm. But there's no laws that are actually segregating people. That's just a, there's no systemic issue in that sense where it's actually a, a way in which the structures of our society have been built. Uh, rather, we've done radical things mm. in our history, and we should all celebrate that where we've made changes. And we've, 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 we're doing work to bring ourselves together on this, um, the, the Christian, with equality. The Christian foundation, yeah, the Christian foundation in our, uh, in our country, I think is, is the, the grounds by which we are able to progress morally. If we're, if we're assuming the fundamental truths of scripture that we are all created equal, that gives us grounds to abolish slavery. Yeah. If you're not, well, the, then, like the you, you might still want to abolish slavery, but you have this big problem of why. Yeah, there's no basis for it, other yeah. than someone might say in their conscience, subjectively, and create their own reasoning for it. Mm -hmm. um, but what they're doing essentially is they ultimately have to be brought back to uh, the God of Scripture if, if yep. it's going to be consistent. Yep. Um, and that's fine, you know. The, the the unbelieving world isn't the church, you know. Um, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And and that's great, and I think that's where we can have this commonality in this world and grace. Uh, the church, going back to Eden's mm -hmm. point, how can the church bless, be blessed? One is getting into other communities. Um, another is knowing the common grace of God working through the church. That knowing that since we do know definitively that people are created in the image of God with equal dignity and value, mm -hmm. um, that these are things that the unbelieving world, while they'll justify their other reasons for having equality. Uh, we can at least speak to them that yes, we are created equal. Let's let's keep this in society. Although I would hope that you would come to the truth of Christ to find out why that is the case. Yeah, why it is we're created equal. I, all that to say, I think this is a point of ministering to the unbelieving world is showing mm -hmm. that we do have this foundation that they long for. Yeah, On yeah. the flip side, is for the believing church to know that uh, the world is not the church. 
and mm. they're ultimately going to have to come to Christ before they come to a philosophic view on uh, uh, how, I, I, I was going to say how to run society. Um, ultimately, they have to come to meet the person of Christ before they really have a consistent worldview. Mm -hmm. I, I wanted to point out um, if if Christians want to um, use hashtag Black Lives Matter, I think they should be aware of, of what their website says um, mm -hmm. regarding uh, their beliefs. So, because it's not it's not just that they want uh, things to be more fair and equitable for the Black community, but they they have a social agenda as well. Mm. Um, so, right here, I have it uh, toward the bottom of their what they believe page, uh, they say, we disrupt, disrupt the Western prescribed nuclear family structure requirement by supporting each other as extended families and villages that collectively care for one another, especially for our children to the degree that mothers, parents, and children are comfortable. Is that, that to me makes me feel uncomfortable as a, as a parent, just thinking that they, they want this kind of more communal blend, but it, it goes from there. So we foster a queer affirming network where we gather, we do uh, do so with the intention of freeing ourselves from the tight grip of heteronormative thinking, or rather the belief uh, that all the world are heterosexual unless he, uh, she, he, or they disclose otherwise. Um, they have some other parts about here on right. um, sexism. And, so is and their sexism. goal to actually implement this into the structure and fabric of our yes. society? Yes. See, and that's what's that's that's the very thing that causes another. So, say this, say this did happen. Let's just yeah. entertain this for a second. Here's a bit you about go, transgenderism as well. Sorry. You go, I'll this page. Yeah, you go to this perspective. You put mm -hmm. this in the law. What have you just done to everyone else that does not agree to that? And that's that's again where now you've you've risen one group over all the others, and then what you're going to find years later, his, history repeat itself, where another group were going to rise up and want to recreate those structures. And what's beautiful, again, about our Constitution and, and the real the basis of American thought and society is the idea that um, have your personal belief about community and raising your children in community and with a group and not having these these norms of which uh, you've uh, the family nucleus as we know it. And as the Bible, a lot of it is drawn from biblical themes, um, husband, wife, uh, re rearing of children in that context and um mm -hmm. and but but say you disregard um where was i going with that <laughs> um you disregard that and you have this communal aspect of all of us as one all of us you know that's that's been around for years actually but but this mm -hmm. but anyway but it's cool about the our, our the United States, currently the way our thought is is that yeah have your views get find those who share those views and do that uh, but don't enforce that on others who don't believe in that. And so that to me is so strange. And so really they're just, um, uh, it's a, like you said, someone said earlier, it's like this dogmatism, this, this communistic way of like, let's set up our ruler and from that, we're going to have everything our, the way we see it. And if you disagree, uh, mm -hmm. you need to be thrown to the dogs. I don't know. Yeah. Be taxed more you'll as you'll some notice, religions you'll do. Notice. Yeah. You'll notice that this doesn't go both ways either. So mm. uh, I posted on my, my Facebook uh, an article about Christians being slaughtered um, mm -hmm. uh, by I Islamicists. And um, someone mentioned that, like, yes, it's, it's really sad. Um, both sides have been warring for a long time. Uh, it's equal sides, something like that. You know, just like pe all, all people basically have their own wars and struggles. Mm. Well, you know, in my mind, I'm thinking if I did hashtag all lives matter when somebody was saying black lives matter, um, you would call me insensitive because I'm, I'm not seeing the situation correctly. Mm -hmm. You know, I'm not, I'm not seeing the, the pain of this group in particular. Uh, I think that the, the pain obviously in the Middle East for, for Christians is, is a lot worse than what we have going on over here. Oh yeah, um, but they they would often get mad at, at us for pointing out that like in the context of Black Lives Matter, and I, I think that's fine to like say this this group in particular is having a hard time. Let's notice that. Um, so in a way, I think they're correct when when somebody says, "Yeah, well, all lives matter." Um, 
like that that is kind of being a little insensitive but to them it doesn't it's not reversed like they when they hear about christian lives being persecuted over in the middle east um i think a lot of people their reaction would be yeah but everybody has problems <laughs> yeah uh, i i want to touch on one more um thing of the spiritual aspect of this whole thing and i think um, this comes back to your point, um, uh, Heath, about uh, about the systematic um, part of it. Is it's easy to try to see a system um, forming in in this against a certain group of people, um, even though the physical evidence isn't there. And I think it's because our naturalistic thinking, once again, stemming out of um, Darwinism is that we completely ignore the spiritual realm and that a lot of these ideas, um, a lot of sin is being accentuated by the spiritual realm and the forces of darkness. And I think that's something that we also need to <clears throat> address through this is that the commonality of thinking may be um, sin being accentuated by, by spiritual forces, which can easily um, create a system um, completely existing within the spiritual realm. And I think that is another thing that like, we need to address as Christians and realize as a Christian that if we see something, we see a pattern, it, it, it may be something that is sin being accentuated by um, spiritual, the spiritual realm. Yeah. 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 You know, that's a good point back to the gospel is, is mm -hmm. that, um, is that this is not a war of flesh and blood, but mm -hmm. of principalities and um, forces in, uh, of evil and the, that are, over this present darkness, I'm kind of paraphrasing and finding misquoting Paul, but um, <laughs> uh, the idea that um, there's this attempt that this the sinfulness of humanity we try and in, in, with influence from fallen angelic beings, um, i.e., demons, um, that this attempt to restructure the new uh, Babel, this mm -hmm. new unity of humanity apart from God. And ultimately, it never results in the peace and shalom our hearts and consciences convict us of. Mm. And, and, and really, that the, brings us to the hope of the gospel that Jesus Christ is the only King of kings and Lord of lords that can bring us together amid our diversity, amid our differences, mm -hmm. and uh, make one world rule that is, brings about shalom in our hearts and shalom among one another. And shalom just means wholeness. Mm -hmm. Everything is right the way it ought to be, rightness. Um, and that we ultimately see in the kingdom to come. Uh, as, as Jesus' resurrection, he has inaugurated the kingdom. He's, a, he's beginning to work in our hearts and redeem humanity from all, all nations, all tongues, all peoples. And ultimately, it's going to culminate with the second comedy and the establishment of the new heavens, the new earth, no sin. Like you said, Ethan, no decay, no corruption, no fu the futility has been re removed because of Christ's righteousness. That is an, is what we need as a society, ultimately, is Jesus. And so this is that call to everyone to really respond to Christ, mm -hmm. really respond to him. Uh, he's calling all to himself. He's saying, uh, you know, if you have an ear, hear. Uh, and, and, the, and that if you do have a sense in your heart that Jesus is Lord and Savior, uh, be assured that that's the spirit of God at work in your heart to soften you to, to his rule. Um, yeah. And again, there'll be this battle. Like you said, I think another thing for believers, this is an encouragement for believers that there will be tensions until Christ's second coming. There will be, um, mm -hmm. the, the, again, the powers of evil at work trying to unify the world against the work of Christ. Mm -hmm. And at the same time, Christ is at work in his bride, cleansing us and preparing mm -hmm. us for his return. You guys want to add to that? No, oh, I think that that did it, man. That is that's beautiful. Yeah, cool. That's, yeah. All right. Hey, well, everyone out there, if you have any questions for us uh, to go over, we'd always appreciate feedback and uh, directions to go with the show. Uh, thank you so much for watching. And uh, yeah, I think you're right, Brent. I think Ethan nailed it um, with with uh, the spiritual realm, and uh, Heath, you're right on. Run, to, run to Christ and live, uh, and get out of the muck and mire. Um, all right. Hey, well, you guys have a wonderful day. We will see you around and, uh, X garage, X garage, X garage. Mm -hmm.